The world is now ahead of you. How will you choose to shape your point of view? Aloha and welcome everyone. My name is Kristen. Today we're going to be talking about scholarships and our winter break checklist. So today's webinar is going to be webinar style, which means you can see us, but we can't see you. Um, as a reminder, all mics have been muted. Our chat has been disabled. So please make sure to put any questions you have in the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. If you see any questions that are similar to questions or comments that you might have, be sure to upvote that so that we can answer that question for you. For, the, for today, we're gonna start an informal presentation about our winter checklist and then move into scholarships. Today's webinar will be recorded and posted to YouTube within 48 hours of our webinar's conclusion. So for our winter break checklist, for those of you that have applied, please make sure to pay your $70 app fee if you have not done that yet. You can also submit any high school transcripts or college transcripts um, along with your application. We will need to see any transcripts, any and all transcripts. Our priority deadline is January 5th for those of you that might still be working on your application. And the final deadline is March 1st. I will get into supplemental documents in just a slide. Okay, some of you might um, have an application fee waiver. If you're unsure, make sure to talk to your school counselor, your career counselor, guidance counselor to see if that's something that you qualify for. Um, these are students that might qualify for free and reduced lunch, SAT or SAT fee waiver, or the NACAC fee waiver. If you're unsure, you can always email us. Um, we'll put our email in the chat. So, sorry. Okay, so for all your students, we'll need to see transcripts for freshman students. If you put in your self-reported scores, um, you do not need to send a transcript until you finish your senior year. Um, then we'll need an official transcript. For transfer students or anybody that might have college credit, we will need to see um, all your official transcripts once you completed your courses. But for the review process, you can submit unofficial transcripts for us to look at. If you have any questions about your transcripts or anything today, you can email us with our manoa.admissions at hawaii.edu email, which we'll also put in the chat for you guys. Okay, supplemental documents. These are not required for your application, but if you think it will strengthen your application, you can submit it up until the final deadline. So even if you've already submitted your application, you can still send us these documents either as an attachment um, or in email form. So anything like a personal statement, a list of accomplishments, a list of achievements, or letters of recommendation, you can submit via email to us. Okay, so our processing time for applications is six to eight weeks. The sooner you get your application in, the sooner um, we'll have a decision for you. For those students that already applied, you might have seen that you got a decision in a faster time. If you want to check on your status, um, you can always click on that link, which someone will put in the chat box. Um, for those students that might have just filled out your application, um, you'll probably just receive an email saying that we just received your application. But if it's been a little bit of time, um, feel free to, to click on that link and see if there's anything that's needed for your application. If there is anything lacking in your application, you will always receive an email from our school 
um, to submit any necessary documents that we need from you. Okay, so for our accepted students, please make sure that once you are accepted to create your My UH account. So that's super helpful for you to receive any emails from the school. So anything from outside um, UH admissions, so housing, financial aid, anything, any communications will come from or go straight to your UH account. So make sure to set that up as soon as you're accepted. Number two, please apply for financial aid. You can do that with your FAFSA. That deadline is February 1st and apply for scholarships, which Christina will get to in just a minute. Um, also, email us, call us if you have any questions whatsoever. We're very responsive, so if you're hesitant about anything, just reach out to us so we can get back to you. Um, we'll put our contacts at the end of the slide. So next, Christina is going to talk to you about scholarships at UH Manoa. Hi everyone, my name is Christina Tiam. I'm currently a senior here at the University of Hawaii at Manoa, and I am the Student Scholarship Coordinator here at the Office of Admissions, and excited to just get into this uh, presentation and help you learn all about ways to fund your education here. Oh, trying to advance the slide. There we go. Um, so this, um, if you have your phones with you or are looking from a computer, feel free to um, type in this website URL or scan the QR code with your phone. Um, this is a link to our Financing Your Future brochure. Um, this is a brochure that details pretty much everything that I'll be going over in the presentation today. The costs of attendance, um, some scholarship opportunities, financial aid opportunities, and it's just a great resource. Um, you'll um, see this QR code pop up multiple times during this presentation, so if, it's, if you're unable to get it to work now, you'll still have multiple chances as the presentation goes on. Um, so the first thing that um, we'll dive into are um, the total investment it will take to attend the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Um, you'll notice that there are three different categories of um, tuition rates, whether you are a resident of Hawaii, um, WUI, or non-resident. So WUI refers to the Western Undergraduate Exchange Program, which applies to states that are west of the Rocky Mountains. If you are a resident of um, some of these states, um, examples are like um, California, Oregon, Washington, Colorado, we get a lot of students from those states. Um, um, you, you automatically qualify for the Western Undergraduate Exchange and that, um, again, it's an automatic process or your tuition rate becomes 1.5 times the resident tuition rate. Um, and you'll also notice that if you aren't a Hawaii resident and aren't part of the Western Undergraduate Exchange, you will fall under the non-resident tuition rate on the far right column. Um, and you'll also notice that on this um, chart. There are books and supplies, room and board, personal expenses detailed, but you'll be happy to know that um, the only set costs on this list are tuition and university fees. Those are the only ones you know for sure that won't change. Um, as far as how much you spend on books and supplies, room and board, and personal expenses goes, that's all up to personal budgeting and how much you are um, wanting to save and spend. So for example, the room and board fee, um, that 13,006, um, just over 600, um, that refers to if you have your very own room, your own bathroom, pretty much just like oh, your own private space. But actually, most of our dorm options, including the freshman dorms, are um, you have a roommate. Um, they're more of like a shared living situation, although they, the dorms are pretty nice. Um, and that will actually reduce your cost to be closer to nine to 10,000 as opposed to the 13,000. Um, and again, with personal expenses, um, this is budgeted if you were um, buying a new laptop for the semester or eating out very often. But again, if you are on meal plan or um, just um, budget and cooking a lot of your own food, the, um, those costs will go down. And again, there's that QR code for the Financing Your Future brochure. So now to talk about some scholarships. The main scholarship that our office administers is the New Warrior Scholarships. You'll often see this referred to as NWS. Um, and there are different scholarships that you may qualify for depending on your uh, residency status. Um, so the top, the first two scholarships on this list, the Regents and Provost Achievements are for Hawaii State residents. 
um, who have, and in order to qualify for this, all of the scholarships on this um, chart, you have to have a 3.8 GPA or higher. Um, and this is the, um, based on the very last transcript you have available and are able to send to us. The application deadline for um, the New Warrior Scholarships is January 24th. And um, the great thing is that you only, it's just like one application. So if you're a state resident, you don't have to apply for the regents and provosts um, separately exactly. It's the same basic application. Um, the Regents Scholarship is one of our most prestigious scholarships covering your full tuition as well as a $4,000 per year stipend and a $2,000 one-time travel grant. Um, the Provost Achievement Scholarship is listed at $10,000 a year. Um, the Manoa Excellence Scholarship, um, the, value of the, the value of the scholarship is basically um, the value of what it would cost to reduce your tuition to the in-state tuition rate. I'm actually a recipient of the Manoa Excellence Scholarship. I'm originally from um, Los Angeles, California. so. Um, because I was a recipient of the scholarship, I get to pay the in-state tuition rate, which is awesome. And if we have any international students here on this call, um, the international non-resident award amount also allows you to pay the in-state tuition rates. Um, so, and then um, as we go on forward in this presentation, we'll discuss ways to make your new warrior scholarship application stand out. Um, I'll mention that the main difference between Regents and Provost Achievement is that in order to qualify for the Regents, you also have to apply to the Honors Program, which is a, a separate application process that requires you to um, fill out an application and meet with the Honors Director to be accepted to that program. So if you are a Hawaii State resident and are wanting to shoot for Regents, um, because you have a 3.8 GPA or higher and have um, awesome extracurriculars, then make sure you fill out the Honors application as well. So here is the New Warrior Scholarship Application Checklist. This just details all of the different components of the application and um, what we recommend to um, make your application stand out. We ask you to detail some awards that you've gotten, activities that you've been involved in, and for how long. Do you have any leadership roles in those activities? Um, what employment have you held um, so far, including whether um, that's more of a leadership or managerial role, or just, um, or if you're, um, more of a, um, a support employee. Um, we do have a new Warrior Scholarship essay. This is kind of your personal statement. Um, you can find the essay question on um, the New Warrior Scholarship um, website. And this essay just allows us to learn a little bit more about you and your aspirations. Um, again, um, we asked for an uploaded high school transcript, um, a letter of recommendation, and again, the honors out for regents. You'll notice that the SAT and ACT scores are um, crossed out and in red because we no longer require SAT or ACT scores for the scholarship. Um, we understand that with COVID and um, just the ongoing issues with the pandemic, it's been um, there have been issues with students getting being able to access um, an SAT or ACT date to take the exam. So we've um, scrapped that completely, um, and that will not be taken into account for the application review process. Um, also, something to um, keep in mind also is you have to be accepted to uh, the university and have a UH ID number in order to access the scholarship, um, which is due January 4th, 2022. And we highly recommend submitting your admissions application by December 15th, which is coming up pretty quickly. So be sure to submit your admissions app soon if this is a scholarship that sounds exciting to you, um, because um, if you apply by this date, um, we are able to process your application and help um, make sure that you get your UHID and number so you can apply for this scholarship. But um, the good thing is if you're still waiting just for the your, um, admissions application to be processed, you are able to um, work on your like new warrior scholarship essay and detail employment and activities. You can just do that on like a Microsoft Word document or Google Doc while you're waiting um, for the admissions app. And here is the New Warrior Scholarship essay question. Again, you can also find it on the website. It is described why studying at the University of Hawaii at Manoa will help you address the pressing problems and needs facing society today. Um, we have a little inspirational quote there to help encourage you through your thinking process, which is from Nelson Mandela, education is the most powerful weapon with which you can use to change the world. And some helpful pointers to keep in mind as you're composing your new Warrior Scholarship essay. We really encourage you to think outside of the box, be creative, and demonstrate um, 
and communicate a good sense of this essay question, um, as well as critical, critical thinking and clarity. We want to really see who you are, your passions, interests, what have you been involved in um, through this essay question. Um, and again, because there's no separate like personal statement aside from this essay question, this is your main opportunity to uh, let your personality and writing style shine through. Here is a rough uh, timeline for the application. Um, we've detailed most of these dates before, but if it is helpful for you to see things in a timeline format, feel free to um, rewatch this webinar once it's posted or take a quick picture of this. Again, in, uh, in just a, um, in two weeks from now, we ask to have an admissions app um, submitted by December 15th. The scholarship application is due January 24th, 2022. We give um, your letter, your recommenders about an extra week to submit letters of rec. Those are due January 31st. Um, scholarship evaluations will take place during the month of February and around mid-March, um, you will be notified of your um, application decision, whether you were awarded the scholarship or not. In April, if you are lucky to be awarded the scholarship, we um, you will be invited to some recognition events. And then May 1st is the deadline to accept the scholarship, which is also the deadline to commit to the university. So they kind of go in hand, hand in hand. Um, if you are waitlisted for the scholarship, you'll hear a, um, you'll hear back from us from the seconds moving forward about um, whether there is space for you to accept the scholarship after um, the initial awardees have give, have had time to accept or decline. Um, another scholarship that is administered through the Office of Admissions is the Manoa Academic Merit Scholarship. And this is an automatic scholarship process that goes along with your admissions application, no separate essay, letters of rec, or anything like that. So as long as you have a GPA of 3.8 or higher, you are automatically awarded the scholarship um, once you submit your admissions application and are accepted to the university. Um, if you're a Hawaii State resident, this is valued at $4,000 a year for four years and the non-resident, um, so if you're not a Hawaii State resident, um, but this includes WUI, you'll get $2,000 a year for four years. Um, the main requirement for both of these scholarships is that you apply for admission by January 5th, which is our application priority deadline. Another resource uh, for scholarships at our university are the STAR scholarships. You can access these scholarships at star.hawaii.edu slash scholarship. And this covers um, all sorts of scholarships, regardless of your residency status. There are so many different scholarships on this database with different monetary values, um, any class standing. There's over 400 scholarships available uh, that have a total value of over 9 million. A story that I often get, um, that I often hear about these STAR scholarships is um, someone who used to work at the Office of Admissions would mention that his friend um, applied for a scholarship that was meant for like women in engineering or like a very specific field. And his friend was um, a man and he was able to, he applied for the scholarship just because he was applying for as many things as he could. Um, and he, I guess he had an essay question prepared for that. And he ended up getting the scholarship because no one else applied for it. And it was a really um, hefty monetary amount that was able to fund his education. So. I don't know if that's necessarily saying applying for things you don't exactly uh, meet the qualifications for, but rather um, apply for anything and everything you can. And, Welcome to um, the University of Hawaii at... And um, that'll just allow you to, um, yeah, finance your education. We also, uh, there's also another separate scholarship database um, through the UH system. And these are referred to as the UH system scholarships. Um, the website's listed right here. Again, um, you can apply regardless of your residency status. So many different uh, valued scholarships, many, many different, and there are many different kinds from different organizations um, at a total value of over 100,000. Um, and this is actually the same um, scholarship portal as the new Warrior Scholarship application. So if you're applying for that, this will be a familiar, um, it'll be easy for you to apply for just a bunch more because this is um, a common scholarship application where you just write uh, a basic essay, submit it to a bunch of different scholarships and just um, add on supplementary documents that are required for the different scholarships. So just some general advice 
to applicants um, for any sorts of scholarships that you'll be applying for. Um, it's really important for you to get involved um, in your community, at school. Um, basically, don't stay complacent. We like to see students taking initiative. Um, it's important to take a, into account and list all of your accomplishments. Um, even before you start the scholarship application process, it would probably be helpful for you to put together a resume or just like a list of things that you've been involved in and have accomplished so that it's easier for you to um, brainstorm and work through um, the application process. And it's also highly recommended to connect with your counselor to get their advice um, as well as their insight on your scholarship applications. So we um, here's an example of some ways that students um, at our university have been able to be involved in their community. Um, for example, this uh, um, the student that's detailed in this slide right here has served as robotics team captain, was an organizer for feeding the homeless, served as senior, vice, senior class vice president, and was a mentor for Big Brother Big Sister. Um, here you'll see like this is a star student that has shown initiative in their community, leadership roles, and um, really wants to make an impact on the people that they care about. So again, this one shows leadership. Um, the, ca the team captain is a big um, selling point there. Um, organizer is a good keyword to rep any sort of representative and as uh, mentoring as well. And this is just another example of ways you can list your accomplishments. Um, it's I think it can be really easy to like overlook certain accomplishments, but even if you like did like were voted ha to have the best project in like one certain class you had, like that's an accomplishment that you should be proud of um, because it's not everyone gets recognized for things like that. Um, um, and if you're involved in sports or just like other, all sorts of different extracurricular activities, be sure to detail um, what you can because um, it shows, um, uh, it, it is especially uh, looked well upon for scholarship applications. So um, some of these accomplishments you'll notice are exceptional, can be difficult to attain, um, are at the national or state level, but local um, awards are also acknowledged and recognized. Um, like I mentioned earlier, you'll notice that not all of these awards are given to everyone and that's why um, it's unique. And the last point, again, um, we highly recommend connecting with your counselor because they can give you feedback on your scholarship application, help you reword some things for you, um, to help improve them and uh, just work for your advantage. They can also help out by providing letters of recommendation for you. Um, the sooner you talk to your counselor, the easier it'll be for them to know who you are, um, overall guidance on the application, as well as additional resources. So again, um, this is just a summary slide that details all the scholarships that we went over today, as well as their deadlines. This is another um, slide that you'll be able to uh, look back upon once this webinar is uploaded, or you can take a quick picture of it right now. Um, and I'll just take a quick uh, second or a few minutes to share um, what I did in my high school experience to earn the Manoa Excellence Scholarship. So again, I've mentioned that I am originally from Los Angeles, California, um, and that, um, so when I was choosing what college to go to, funding my education was um, something that I was especially like trying to keep track of and make, making sure that um, it was affordable or at least not too expensive. Um, and I was involved in multiple opportunities in um, high school at the leadership capacity. So I served as, uh, my main thing was Ecology and Wildlife Club. It was a club that I had founded um, to help increase environmental literacy in my school and the local community. So I founded the club, was president for two years and was really involved in that. I served as treasurer for Key Club, which is an, a volunteer-based organization, and also served as editor-in-chief for Yearbook. Um, so yeah, I think a lot of my leadership opportunities in high school allowed me to earn um, the Manoa Excellence Scholarship because it showed that um, I played an active role in my community, was capable of working in a team and, um, and facilitating conversations um, in the group settings that I'd been in. Um, but if anyone has any specific questions about um, my high school experience, my experience currently at the university, um, we'd be happy to get those answered. Just make sure you drop them in the Q&A. 
And we'll end this uh, presentation with some contact info for the office admissions. Our email is listed right there, minode.scholarships um, at hawaii.edu. Specific, um, specifically, if you have scholarship-based questions for about the new warrior scholarships, um, and if you want to contact the Office of Admissions in general, it's manoa.admissions at hawaii.edu. And I believe I am turning it over um, to Kirsten right now. We will um, answer some Q&A and then you'll get to hear all about some of our upcoming webinars. Okay, and thank you, Christina, for sharing your story and for giving us all that helpful information. We have a upcoming webinar next week on our direct admin program to the Scheidler College of Business. So if any of you are interested in that program, make sure to tune into that webinar next Tuesday at 1 p.m. I'm going to, um, here we have our contact information for our office. You can call us um, or send us an email if you have any questions, even after this session. Again, we're very responsive. Um, so even if it's just a little concern of yours, feel free to reach out to us so that we can help you um, regarding whatever, whatever questions you might have. Um, now we're going to take any remaining questions that anyone might have regarding scholarships or the winter break checklist, maybe setting up their um, UH account. If there's any questions, we will be answering them now. So I see a few questions on the Q&A and I'll just go through them. If you have any follow-up questions, um, please let me know, drop them in the Q&A. Um, Samantha asked, what is looked for in the Manoa Excellence Scholarship essay? Um, what would make me stand out in a good way? Um, I think it's because the essay is the main, um, your main area to convey like your story and your aspirations for the future. This is really one, one uh, where you want to let your voice shine. My main piece of advice for that, um, for like regardless of your residency status is that like you want to draw upon like what experiences in the past have shaped who you are today and like what you want to do. Um, two, what are you currently doing to like reach those goals and three, what do you plan on, like what active steps do you plan on taking in the future at UH Manoa to allow you to um, I, like become the person you wanna be and what can UH do to do that? Um, so that'll probably help out with um, the questions that, or um, all sorts of scholarship questions that you'll probably encounter during the application process. Um, let's see, do you need another letter of recommendation or if you already submitted one with the application, is that already part of the New Warrior Scholarship? So the New Warrior Scholarship application is completely separate, a completely separate application from admissions. Um, so if you submitted a letter of recommendation for admissions, um, we don't have access to that. We can't, um, the New Warrior Scholarship evaluators won't see any of that. So you will have to ask your recommenders um, to resubmit a letter of recommendation for you. And the way you do that is on the scholarship portal, you like list your recommenders, their email address, contact info, and then they'll get a link that's specialized for them, for them to upload their letter of recommendation for you. Um, and that's how your scholarship gets evaluated. So um, yes, you should, uh, you do need to submit an extra one, but if you already have one for your admissions application, it would probably be easy to ask the same recommender for them to modify the letter for scholarship purposes. Um, if we were accepted and our GPA is now at the 3.8, can we resubmit the transcript to qualify for the scholarships? Um, let's see. I believe that, um, yeah, so yes, you can, as long as the th uh, your 3.8 GPA is reflected um, at like this current semester at the latest, you are able to um, resubmit your transcript for evaluation. Um, I'm just scrolling down, making sure I'm not missing anything. Um, so how competitive is the Manoa International Excellence Scholarship? So um, a lot of this information can be found on the New Warrior Scholarship Frequently Asked Questions. We offer about five um, Manoa International Excellence Scholarships per year. I'm, I'm gonna detail some of the other ones right now just because we're on this topic. Um, we're able to offer about 16 regions 80 Provost Achievement and 15 Mano Excellence, and again, five Mano International Excellence. So it's a fairly competitive scholarship. We're uh, taking 
the best of the best because we're asking for a high GPA, high involvement and activities. But as long as you're putting in your best foot forward, um, you can know that you, you know, you tried your best. And it's also good to know that there are also so many other scholarship opportunities here at our university aside from the new warrior scholarships. Um, does it matter if you submit the scholarship application early? The main benefit to that is that you make sure that you are making the deadlines um, as all applications are, like the, the two hours right before an application is due, the system can get pretty overloaded. Um, it can, there could be backup in just trying to like click the submit button. I know we've had issues with that in the past. So like submitting it early um, ensures that like, you know, it's off your plate. You don't have to worry about submitting it last minute and encountering like network issues. Um, but the evaluation process does not occur until February. So there are no uh, benefits as far as the evaluation process goes. But it, I guess like the main benefit is like, if you aren't able to submit your application on time, then it won't be evaluated. Um, the 3.8 GPA is weighted or unweighted. So if usually weighted GPAs are higher, uh, would highly recommend submitting your weighted GPA. The newer scholarships are awarded in mid-March. Um, this was detailed in the timeline that we went over and can also be found in the FAQ of the New Warrior Scholarship website. What other scholarships are there besides the New Warrior Scholarships? So the main two we talked about during this presentation were the STAR Scholarships and the UH System Common Scholarship application. Both of those are huge databases that have access to many, many different scholarships. Um, the nice thing about the UH System Common Scholarship application, again, is that it's one main scholarship uh, personal statement. And addition, if you're looking at specific scholarships, they may ask for supplementary documents, but um, it, it is nice because you're only focusing on one main um, scholarship application. Um, so the new warrior scholarships um, that I've mentioned in this presentation are for freshmen only, as, um, in the, as mentioned in the chart. If you are a transfer student, you are encouraged to look at the resources in the Financing Your Future brochure. Um, how many scholarships are offered under New Warrior Program for those that are not international or WUI? So again, that is about 16 regions and 80 provosts. Um, we are, I'm seeing um, an estimate of how many students apply for the international scholarship. And Justin replied to that, about 20 to 40 applicants apply for the Manoa International Excellence Scholarship each year. This is a really popular, um, and there are other popular international scholarships um, in the link that Justin replied to for that question. So does the weighted GPA in the scholarship portal mean the average GPA from grade nine to 11? Yeah, um, I believe so. Let me see how Justin responded to that. Yes, Cumul um, we're referring to a cumulative GPA over your high school experience. So from grades nine through 11, um, basically your most current transcripts. What scholarships are available to non-residents besides the Manoa Excellence Scholarship? We detailed that, STAR and UH System Common. You're also encouraged to look at scholarships that are not like affiliated with the university. There are a lot of private organizations that will um, like have scholarship opportunities and that those are completely fine to um, apply to as well. For example, I mentioned I was a treasurer for my high school's key club. I applied for a region level scholarship and was able to earn 1500 um, to support my education. Okay, let's see. What are, what is an example of some accomplishments um, that those can be awards that you've earned during school? Um, any like, yeah, basically just awards that you've received, even earning like best presentation in like a class, I would consider an accomplishment. That's a pretty big deal, especially um, as you uh, go further in your education. Answered how many regions and new warrior scholarships, um, letters of recommendation are all through the portal. What did I include in my Manoa Excellence Scholarship essay? So my scholarship essay, um, yeah, like Justin mentioned in the reply to that is that it was a different question from um, what it is this current year, but I can remember that I uh, talked about how my high school leadership experiences have prepared me for 
um, my education at UH Minot and why I am interested in studying marine biology. So I'm one of the few students who started with a major and didn't switch it. But there's no shame in switching your major. Um, many of our students do, and that's the beauty of figuring out what you want to study. Can the merit scholarship be negotiated? Unfortunately, it cannot be, but there are other scholarship opportunities if you don't qualify for it. Um, so for stackable scholarships, so the Manoa Academic Merit Scholarship, so that's the automatic one, and the New Warrior Scholarships cannot be stacked because they're, those are both administered through the Office of Admissions. So you can only receive one. If you receive the New Warrior Scholarship, would, you would, should probably uh, accept that one because that one is of higher monetary value. Um, so, but you cannot stack the two on top of each other. But if you have external scholarships um, outside of the Office of Admissions through STAR, UH System, private organizations, um, those should um, not affect your awarding as long as they don't conflict with the terms of the agreement. Let's see. How many people typically apply for Manoa Excellence? Um, several hundred students apply for that scholarship every year. As you um, can probably expect, we have a lot of out-of-state students who are hoping to study at our amazing institution. So um, those who have a 3.8 GPA or higher will probably apply for this and hope to be awarded. Um, so the standard tuition rate with respect to the Bachelor's of Science in Nursing um, does not include fees such as student fees or lab fees. For dorms, you can actually um, look up UH Manoa dorms um, or UH Manoa student housing, and they actually have tours of all of the dorms on campus. Um, if you're a freshman, you'll probably be housed at one of our freshman towers or Johnson Hall, and you can see the layouts of all of the rooms. If you're on campus or um, in the state of Hawaii, you can request a campus tour um, that, will, um, that will allow you to get on campus and see a little bit of the housing area. For WUI, do you have to apply? Nope, it's just automatically applied as long as you are listed as having a California um, address or any state that is west of the Rockies on your application. So regarding the um, military situation, yes, you have to contact our residency counselor to see if you would be eligible for Hawaii in state tuition and Kaden replied with the inquiry request form. If there are any other students in that same situation, please uh, feel free to click check out that link. Um, let's see. Oh, I kind of skipped through that. Sorry, the questions are kind of out of order on my screen. I'm just making sure I'm getting through everything. Let's see. How many students do we look at? There's the dorm question. There's Wooey. Um, we talked about there's no priority for the scholarships if you apply early. Um, if you don't have a 3.8 or out of state in WUI, you can get scholarships through all the other resources mentioned during this webinar. 3.8 GPA is um, weighted or non-weighted, whichever is higher, um, you should probably list on your application. Let's see. So your GPA is based on uh, we take a cumulative weighted GPA, including college courses um, taken during high school. So as long as it's on the transcript that we're receiving and it shows a 3.8 or higher, it will be eligible. So SAT scores are not part of the application process. So if you did have a really awesome SAT or ACT score, congratulations. Um, um, unfortunately, and you can definitely list that on other um, scholarship applications that you're applying to. It is just not part of our um, holistic uh, application review process for the new warrior scholarships. Do I have to resubmit a letter of recommendation and my transcript if it was already submitted and I was accepted? So yes, um, any documents submitted to the Office of Admissions are completely separate to um, the new warrior scholarship application. You'll have to resubmit those items again. Um, I'm seeing a few questions about residency. Um, there is a um, highly recommend talking to a, the residency counselor at the Office of Admissions so you can figure out um, if you are eligible for in-state tuition. There are certain, um, I guess, um, caveats to trying to establish 
residency while being a student. So you'll just want to make sure that you address all those concerns with a residency um, counselor. Can the same person submit a letter of recommendation? Yes, the same person who wrote your letter of rec for admissions can totally write the same letter of recommend, uh, a letter of recommendation for the new Warrior Scholarship essays, as well as all the other scholarships that you're probably applying for. Um, and we just require one for the new Warrior Scholarship. Let's see. Sorry, again, I'm losing the, the order in the chat. How many students apply to the Regent Scholarship every year? There are several hundred applicants for that scholarship every year. Um, if you have a transcript from grades seven through 11, please in input the cumulative from just the high school years, so nine through 11. Um, and how far back should you list accomplishments? We recommend from your high school experience. Um, so from ninth grade on would be good to know. Um, because anything that occurs prior to that is likely not relevant to the application process unless it's kind of an ongoing thing that you've been doing for a significant portion of your life. More questions are coming in on the GPA. Yes, so if you're taking any honors or AP courses that are contributing to a weighted GPA, um, you are welcome to incorporate that G or like a list that GPA onto your application. If you have applied for um, admissions and have not received any paperwork, please email us at manoa.admissions at hawaii.edu, um, just like detailing what's going on, and we'll try to get you helped out. Um, and, and also in general, if you have any questions about the admissions process or scholarships, you can email us as well. We um, will try to get those answers, those questions answered right away. What is the honors college interview like? So I'm actually part of the honors uh, program. It's not required for Manoa Excellence Scholars, but it was something that I wanted to incorporate as part of my education here. It's a really, um, it's a like formal interview, but it's not scary. The honors directors are all really awesome and really are just there to make sure that you're genuine in your interests. They, the basic questions they ask are like, why do you want to be a part of honors? Like, what have you achieved in high school? What are you hoping to achieve during your um, undergraduate education? So it's very, it's not like a job interview at all. It's more so just they want to get to know you as a person and make sure you're genuine in your desire to be um, a part of the program. More questions? If accepted, how do you reach your college counselor and um, find the best fit? So once accepted to the university, you can actually um, and like your admissions application tells you like, oh, you've been admitted into this program. Um, you should actually be able to find the um, college counselors for your degree and set up an email or set up an, uh, a meeting with them as a prospective student. And they will be able to let you know, like, this is what your um, what your degree plan might look like. Here's what classes you might take in your first semester. And like, this is what people should know about the college, um, especially those in the major. So there are ways for you to connect with a counselor even prior to committing to the university. If you are using a, oh, let's see, are there, I'm seeing there are some upvoted questions. I'm just trying to find those, make sure, are those at the top? Looks like most of the upvoted ones um, I've answered. So that is awesome. If the school doesn't weight GPAs, will we weigh it? Um, we will take the GPA indicated on your transcript. So we don't automatically convert for you. It's um, basically what's listed on your transcript. So I, um, I, uh, um, I'll mention that like my high school didn't weigh GPAs for like anyone. So we used unweighted 
all four years. Um, so that's on a 4.0 scale. So it was a little bit more difficult for us because many students were taking AP and honors. But um, so yeah, there is no conversion for that at the admissions level. We're just taking what's on the transcript. Okay, so there are some questions in the open tab that I'm looking at. Okay, can the STAR and UH Common Scholarship only be used at UH Manoa? Um, so the, I believe, so both of them are scholarships that are open to the UH system. So if you're attending a community college or like UH Hilo, I believe you have access to the same scholarship application. However, some of the like eligibility requirements may list like you must be a student at UH Manoa in order to get the scholarship. So there are certain instances like that where like the qualification, like the eligibility requirements will require to be at a certain institution, but the application like login as a whole is open to the UH system. Um, okay, what was my experience like going to Manoa as an out of state student? Um, I really enjoyed it. So I am lucky to have a really um, good support system from my family and friends who supported me um, moving away and made sure I felt loved and not too homesick when we all said goodbye. I did, it was a lot easier than I expected. I just packed like what I absolutely needed from home. Um, so, you know, clothes, a few stuffed animals that I didn't want to part with yet and did most of my like dorm shopping here on island. So I didn't have to worry about purchasing any like big items and like carrying those over on a plane. And my number one recommendation to making friends at like any institution, if you are moving far away from home, is to join a club. So universities, our university specifically has over 200 clubs on campus. And um, I, even though I dormed my first year, I moved off campus and everyone I am currently living with, I met through the very first organization I joined, my, like my very first week of school. Um, and now they're like lifelong friends and I live with them and I'm just, um, grateful for the clubs that exist on campus to allow us to connect with people who have similar interests. What are the judges for a Manoa Excellence Scholarship looking for in an applicant? Um, we just, again, like I've mentioned before, um, it looks really great to have, to take initiative in your community if you, that you're taking leadership roles. Um, and we understand that sometimes people have like responsibilities to their families at home. So those are important situations and circumstances to um, to um, take into account when you're writing your new or your scholarship essay. Um, so anything like, oh, another thing that I also like telling students is like, imagine you're typing out your essay and you're like in a public library or just like somewhere that's public and you accidentally click print to like a public printer. Someone should be able to like pick up that piece of paper and read it and know like there's no one else but like one person this applies to. So you want to tell a unique story, like your story. It doesn't have to be like hugely over the top or anything like that because we're all coming from different places, but um, it should be unique and like, like show who you are. Are sports scholarships awarded through the university? Um, yes, and they are not awarded through this office. If you're interested in coming to school through a sports um, or athletic scholarship, um, you should connect with the athlete, the coaches for the sport that you're interested in pursuing and discuss um, and move on from there. Once you've connected with them, they should um, give you a better indication of like what scholarship and opportunities are available at our opportunity and you can coordinate with them um, what that what it might look like for you to sign on uh, to do athletics at our um, at UH. Is the New Warrior Scholarship guaranteed for four years? If you are awarded a New Warrior Scholarship, yes, it is guaranteed for four years as long as you maintain a cumulative 3.0 uh, GPA during your undergraduate education. Why did I choose to study UH and what did I choose to study? So I am studying marine biology. This is um, why what brought me to UH. So the main reason is there uh, a lot of the leading research in that field um, is happening here. There's a, an institution called uh, the Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology that's located on a little island called Coconut Island. And that's um, where like a lot of coral research and shark research and fish research is happening. Um, and the other big reason that pushed me to come to school here was because I felt like it gave me the most room to grow. Um, I felt like if I stayed 
close to home, I would have stayed like stagnant in my aspirations and my goals and dreams because I just felt too comfortable. And I knew that moving uh, out of state would allow me like more independence to make decisions and figure out who I am for myself. So that is something also to keep in mind when you're um, figuring out what university is a good fit for you. What is the deadline to accept the International Merits Award? I'm actually not sure about that question. If any of our other moderators and panelists are aware of that question, uh, can you please answer that? Um, that is through the International Student Services. I heard there was a relocation type program for non-resident students from the campus. I cannot remember the exact name. Um, I'm actually not sure what relocation service um, that is. Oh, sorry, um, Justin, I just saw that you uh, replied. Is May 1st this deadline for IMS International Merit Award? Um, I wasn't sure if that was the same. But anyways, um, the relocation service type program for non-resident students. I'll elaborate on what I'm aware of. Um, there's not a like a program that will like help move you in. Although like when you do move into the dorms, there are many volunteers to help you like move your stuff to the dorm rooms. Um, and additionally, like Bed Bath and Beyond has a program where you can like scan what items you want to purchase like at a Bed Bath and Beyond in your like hometown, and then they'll reserve those items for you here in Hawaii. So you don't have to worry about shipping any of those stuff and this, um, the package will be reserved for you. So you just go to the Bed Bath & Beyond here, um, scan the package, and then you have everything that you originally wanted. Um, so that is a relocation program that I used. Um, yes. And I also know that if you're an international student, they do have partnerships with the East West um, Center. Lastly, how costly is it to live in Hawaii? Um, as I'm sure many of you are aware, the cost of living here is not uh, the absolute cheapest uh, when compared to some other states in the continental US. But I will say as a student, it is um, pretty, it's like manageable. Um, the on-campus housing rates, I would say are fair for the area. Uh, and if you are choosing to live off campus with other roommates, I've also found it to be not too expensive uh, to live close to campus as well. Um, the main thing really is like, if you're going out and doing touristy things every weekend, like skydiving and renting, renting a surfboard every day of the week, then it, the cost can add up. But I think the main, a good, an awesome benefit about being here is there's a lot of things you can do that don't require like a fee. Like hikes are so accessible, going to the beach, um, just like hanging out with friends. That, that's all things that, uh, those are things that you can do as part of your college experience without needing to, um, uh, I guess like uh, lose many savings. <laughs> but I've enjoyed my time here and have felt like um, I've been able to budget it well. But thank you all so much for um, asking awesome questions. I love answering your questions and you all had great ones. Again, you have our contact information if you have any further questions. Um, but that's it today. I hope everyone is staying safe and healthy. Um, thank you for joining us and we hope to see you at other webinars.